Hi, my name is Janine Driver. I'm so happy you're here. Oof. All right, up next we have Wade Robson. Wow, we're in the final stretch. Wade Robson and Michael Jackson. Uh, I know you guys are waiting for this. Oh boy, we got a lot to cover here, so let's dive in. This is regarding HBO's documentary called Leaving Neverland. It is a four hour documentary that um, came out, um, let's see, I wrote it down here, on the Sundance Film Festival in March, March 4th, came out on HBO, it was on the, the Sundance Film Festival, January 25th, 2019. And uh, there are two people who allegedly, um, they're coming out saying Michael Jackson allegedly abused them. And last week I sp spoke about one of them, James Safechuck, and tonight I'm talking about Wade Robson, Wade Robson, the other accuser. First, let me tell you a little bit of what was put on line here uh, with regard to me. Um, what's said, you clearly don't realize that for our documentary wasn't on the fly, on the wall thing. Those participants were given numerous opportunities to shoot and reshoot and telling their audience. First of all, I didn't realize that. that is, this, Sharon, with all due respect, that is like one of the dumbest comments I've ever read. Really, I didn't realize that it's a documentary and it was filmed many, many times. That's ridiculous. Uh, I'm not an idiot. Um, plus, I've been in documentaries. I was on a History Channel documentary. I'm in the Discovery Channel. Two documentaries with the Discovery Channel. I know how it works. I'm on television numerous times. I'm not saying that in a braggadocious way. I'm saying that everybody knows a documentary is filmed days and days and days. When I do my social media hits, at the end, it's a one minute that you're watching, but it takes me 40 minutes to do it. So I get that it could be done over and over and over again. It doesn't matter. These micro expressions that show up on our face and certain word choices are going to still appear if someone is being deceptive or if someone is being authentic. Even if it is said over and over and over again, yes, it's harder to detect sometimes, but there are certain tells when you begin to look for these patterns that you'll begin to spot if you are trained in it. So. Um, do you think people um, could have been manipulated? All right. Uh, I believe Wade, Wade and James Safechuck and Wade um, Robson are telling the truth. So we get that out right out of the gate here. I do believe they're telling the truth. And we're going to go into why do I why do I think that? Oh, let me let me back this up a smidge. <laughs> Um, why doesn't anyone talk about this fantasy book by Victor? There's a fantasy book. Michael Jackson sued them. You can buy the book for hundreds of dollars online or on Amazon. What do you mean? Why is not anyone talking about it? Everybody's talking about that book. Everyone's talking about that book. It doesn't matter. That makes no sense. So because someone wrote about the book in, the, in a book about their imaginary relationship um, with Michael Jackson, that there was a, ma an, a marriage, therefore they could have pulled that story and then said that it, it happened to them, then why aren't both guys saying that they both got the, had the marriage? Um, it's, it's so ridiculous. So I was molested and someone said, don't tell us you're molested. That, this is YouTube Live. This is Janine Driver show here, Celebrity Lie Detector Live. My name is Janine Driver. Create your own show. If you don't want to tell people personal things about yourself, that's great. I'm authentic and real, and I'm a storyteller. And if you don't like storytelling, you just want facts, go buy books on detecting deception. This probably isn't the right place for you. Uh, so I was molested as a young kid, and it's highly likely the thing that this guy did to me, he did to all the other girls he probably molested. Right? So in his shed, he had a chair off to the left. I was climbing in a tree. He had me come out, said, let's play a fun game. So if I write that in a book and 10 other women came out and said, hey, this has happened because I write it in a book, it means they're lying. That makes no sense. If you know anything about child predators, they have routines. They have routines. So enough with this fantasy book. Uh, and then last but not least, your articulation needs work at becoming more eloquent. You keep swallowing hard because you're not pausing when you need to in order to swallow and keep your throat clear, lubricated. I have some water nearby. Um, thanks, Healthy Andrew. That's very nice of you. Um, and uh, I'm sorry you find it distracting. This is free stuff you're getting. Move on. I probably blocked him. I'm not sure. Uh, I was super sick last time I was here. I had a really bad cough. And... Um, I keep water and unsweet iced tea right here. Someone said, sweet tea is not good for you because they saw, saw me drinking unsweet iced tea. It's fascinating. Listen, I'm not interested. Go create your own health channel. And if I want your health tips, I'll come follow you on your health tip YouTube channel. 
All right, uh, not interested. The only thing I'm interested in is ideas for different shows. If you don't like what I have to say, goodbye. I'm just gonna block you anyway, so why waste your time? Go find someone that you do like. I get it, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I talk fast, I'm from Boston. It's part of my baseline, I run out of breath. I'm 48 years old, 48 years old. I mean, I'm pretty much who I am. So I understand pausing is important. Um, so for all the people who said good stuff, you'll know that I did not block you from my page. Chuck's mom said she jumped out of bed and danced when reported he died in 2009, yet her son said didn't remember the abuse till 2013. I think this comment is mixed up. Uh, if in fact, if, if it was, first of all, there is no Chuck, okay? So James Safe Chuck, you mean? So James Safe Chuck told his mother when Michael Jackson was being accused and called him to testify at, at the big case, I think it was with the kid that was dying of some type of illness, I think cancer, called James Safe Chuck and he called his mother and said, mom, Michael Jackson's not a good guy. I'm not testifying and I don't want you and dad to testify. So if it was Jane Safechuck's mother who said she jumped up and down, I'm not saying she told the truth or not, I didn't analyze the mothers in that kind of detail, um, then it's totally in sync. So you're mixed up, who fan 78. If it was um, Wade Robson, then yes, because Wade Robson didn't tell his mother until way after uh, his, uh, Michael Jackson died. Uh, recently, I went on uh, CNN this past Saturday and um, talked about uh, in the uh, Schmerconish show. I'm from Boston, so we say these words weird. And it's been watched. If you look down here, unbelievable. Almost 3 million people since Saturday. It went crazy viral on YouTube. It was as high as the, the fourth trending video on YouTube. I was getting calls from my nephews and nieces in Boston saying, Auntie Nina, I went on my phone this morning and you're on here. I'm showing you this video really quickly because I hesitated when I said my husband, so I'm getting bad uh, press here, uh, haters saying, you don't even know your husband's name. The reason I hesitated is my husband is in politics. And I hesitated because I knew I was gonna be likely asked about leaving Never Neverland. And uh, the host, Michael, told me he was likely going to ask me about it. So I hesitated because I didn't want my husband getting hate. So you can hear me stutter a little bit. Uh, you, this is why there is no hard and fast rule, this person is lying. It means that they could be lying or this is a hot spot or a probing point where I would want to ask more questions here. You just took a second and wrote to me, hey, Janine, is there any reason why you stuttered when you said your husband's name, I would have explained to you, yeah, I hesitated because I didn't think he would be happy if I said it, but I said it. Sorry, Leif Larson. I didn't do this All stuff. Right. Okay, so he's hitting his chest right here. These are called illustrators, and it's congruent with what he is trying to convince us of, which is he's angry. This is legit anger. He stands up, look at this. I want everyone to notice at home. Do you see how he steps away from Gail? This is actually right here. It's it's this distancing. It's This is what we see with aggressiveness. Before someone attacks, you'll often see a step back. I'm Janine Driver, the mother of three sons, the wife of, of uh, Leif Larson. But when I take a step back, this Janine's going to punch you in the face. All right, did you hear it? I'm the wife of um, um, Leif Larson. Yeah, because I was going to say I'm the wife of a political media advisor. And then I'm like, oh, I don't want people then getting involved with politics with me because I don't like talking about politics. So I was like, that's my brain hesitating right there. So that's what that hiccup's all about. This thing I'm talking about, it's called psychological distancing, that when people move back, this is, uh, and they're aggressive, they're angry. You see all this rage that we see with our Kelly here. The psychological distancing is an increase in rage and anger. It's, it's like I'm taking a step back and what I'm gonna do next is potential danger. Cops pull people over inside the road and this often happens. Dude, it's not like that. Dude, it's not like that. It's not like that. And they take a step back and then they come boom and, and sucker punch the cops. The cops get ready to do what? Chase them. They think they're gonna run. They think they're gonna run. Enough of R. Kelly, I'm R. Kelly'd out. All right, 1987, five-year-old Wade Robson meets Michael Jackson backstage at his bad tour in Brisbane after winning a dance contest, 1987. Then 1989, Wade's mother contacts Michael and it leads to a weekend trip to Neverland Ranch. Then the family goes to the Grand Canyon. If you watch this documentary, you know about this. 
family goes to the Grand Canyon. Michael asks if Wade can stay. First, the mom says no, and the father says no, and then they change your mind and let him stay for a week. Do the math. Seven-year-old Wade staying at the Neverland Ranch with Michael. Michael even asked the mother if her son can sleep with Michael. She said yes. Everyone's wondering why the mother's getting a hard time. Well, because one father committed suicide and the other father wasn't interviewed. I don't even know if he's living right now. Uh, Wade's mother, um, they go to the Grand Canyon, the family, because Wade has a brother and a sister. So the parents, the brother and the sister go to the Grand Canyon and they leave Wade behind. And this is where Wade claims Allegedly, this abuse first started with Michael Jackson. Then speed up ahead, 1991, Wade and his mother and sister moved to Los Angeles to further Wade's career. Now this breaks up the whole entire family because her husband is back home in Brisbane, Australia, along with her older son. This causes massive upheaval and make a long story short, eventually the um, father um, years later ends up committing suicide. Now he did suffer with mental illness. He had supposedly um, bi bipolar disorder and suffered with some of that, um, the, the depression that goes with that. Um, within, within either the first or second night of Michael and I being alone at Neverland, the night started changing. One of the ways I remember it it starting is, you know, Michael just sort of starting to touch my legs and touch my crotch over my pants. It progressed to him performing oral sex on me, him showing me how to perform oral sex on him. Uh, this is congruent with a truthful statement. And again, it could be a memorized statement, right? Maybe he said it so many times that uh, it's just now becomes believable and he memorized it like a script. There's nothing in here that's jumping out for me. As suspicious. 1993, this may you remember this Jody Chandler child abuse case. The 10 year old um, Wade Watts testified in court that nothing inappropriate ever happened to him. 1994, a year later, Jackson and Chandler family settle out of court, according to Court TV, for approximately $20 million, if not more than that. And this was really controversial here in our country because some of the people are like, well, Jackson was told by his lawyers he'll save money by settling out of court. And other people are like, dude, you have all the money in the world. If you didn't sexually do this stuff to these kids, why would you not keep going to court to prove that you're innocent? So the country was really divided here. I'm curious what you think. Do you think, uh, what would you do? Everybody's different. What would you do? If you had all the money in the world and all the fame in the world and someone was saying you did something you didn't do you molested somebody, or you killed somebody, or you are a heroin dealer and you sell heroin to people and you kill people's lives because you sell heroin. Would you settle out of court with the family who said you killed their kid or molested their kid or sold drugs to their kid? If you had all the money in the world, would you settle out of court because it would save you money in the long run or would you fight the fight? Tell me what you believe. I'm curious in your opinion for this one. I definitely would like it, whether on Facebook or on um, YouTube. Then 1996, Wade, who is now 14, claims this is his last night he spent with Michael Jackson. Allegedly, Jackson uh, tried to have anal sex with him, and he walks through this in several details. It's a tough one to, to listen to. Um, the protocol that uh, hypothetically or, or allegedly um, Michael Jackson would do is really tough to hear. 2005, Wade, now 22, testifies along with Macaulay Cotton, denying Jack never touched him. And as a result, the young boy uh, who was saying he was molested by Michael Jackson, uh, he does not win the case. He does not win the case. Uh, Wade testifying was crucial along with Macaulay Cockin. I remember that, by the way. I remember this happening. Do you remember this? At this point, uh, we hear from Wade, absolutely not. Uh, and I can tell you right now, this is what he said when he was 14, absolutely not. And I can tell you right now that if he had, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, ask if Jackson had touched Robson in a sexual way. He said, never, I wouldn't stand for it. Okay, um, so the word to absolutely not is overselling. And Wade was young here, he's 14. No is always the strongest denial. The words absolutely not are denial, but it's called a weak denial. The best denial is a no. And um, never, I would never stand for it. Did he, did he ever touch you in a sexual way? Again, the strongest denial here would be what? No, not never. Never is overcompensating to try to get you to believe. Truthful people convey information. Liars try to get us to believe. Now, this is interesting. So 14-year-old Wade says, never, I wouldn't stand for it. All right, that's 
odd language for me. Um, and then also let's scoop back up right over here. I wouldn't be here right now. And I can tell you right now, if he had, I wouldn't be here right now. There's some suspicious language right here. I'm highlighting it for you. Absolutely not. If he had, this is a little a command in here, a little secret embedded command. He had. Um, sometimes there are messages hidden within our language because our brain doesn't want us to lie. So right here, uh, we see he had. Um, this is just a hot spot for me that I would say, hmm. I would question this kid again in more details. Um, asked if Jackson touched any way, never, I wouldn't stand for it. So the 14 year old says I wouldn't stand for it. So I want you to imagine, um, did someone ever sell heroin to you? Did you ever do heroin with your dad? No, and I wouldn't stand for it. Hmm. See, truthful people expect to be believed. And so usually they just say something like, no, uh, but no, I wouldn't stand for it. It's again, overselling. So we have a never, and then we have, I wouldn't stand for it. Both those two are just overly trying to convince us truthful people expect to be believed. Uh, here is Wade Robson when he was 14. And the 10 year old Wade had oh, slumber 10. parties with Jackson. Oh, no, this is 14. Talking about it, I think. Yeah, you know, there's been different times where it's just been me and Michael. Oh, well, maybe he's and 10 here. Times yeah. where he has other friends over too. That's what. Like what Brett said, it's just a slumber party. You just have a lot of fun. And the 10 year old Wade had slumber parties with Jackson, sleeping with him in the same bed. Yeah, you know, there's been different times where it'll just be me and Michael. Then there'll be other times where he has other friends over too. That's what, like what Brett said, it's just a slumber party. You just have a lot of fun. And the 10 year old Wade had slumber parties with Jackson, sleeping with him in the same bed. Yeah, you know, there's been different times where it'll just be me and Michael. Then there'll be other times where he has other friends over, too. That's what, like what Brett said, it's just a slumber party. You just have a lot of fun. All right, Holy, there's a lot happening here, all right? Uh, first of all, does this sound like a kid telling you they had a lot of fun? Let's just start there. You know, when someone tells me they're happy, you know what I look for? Happiness. You know what I listen for? Happiness. When someone tells me they're angry, I'm looking for anger. I'm looking for tone of voice increase, right? Or deepening, heavy, right? I'm looking for this increase in pressure. When someone tells me they're disgusted, I'm looking for disgust. Where's the happiness? There's no happiness here. Now, maybe, maybe he's been interviewed over and over and over again, and the happiness is like, you know, sometimes kids are like, all right, I've already talked about this a hundred times. You know, I've already talked about this a hundred times. So maybe it is that. I don't know. Um, he also does a shoulder shrug here. Now, be careful with these shoulder shrugs, everybody, because a shoulder shrug is uncertainty. However, sometimes when people are telling a story, especially a story they've told many times, because people keep asking the same question, you'll see people shrug. It's like they're saying, I don't know what else you want me to tell you. Uh, I did a class, this three-day course one time, and I had someone that worked at Gap, and he was in security for Gap. He was in security for the Gap, the, you know, the store of the Gap. And when he told his story, I said, walk me through what your typical work week looks like. And he started telling the story, I do this and this and this, and then he went like this. And the, my class burst out laughing, and they're like, he's lying. He doesn't work for Gap security. I go, hold on. We just know it's a hot spot. A hot spot means we need to probe further, a probing point. And I just probed. I said, you know, is there any reason why it seems like you're uncertain about something? And he goes, well, it's gap security. There's certain things I can't tell you. And I don't know if I've told you enough to like complete this exercise. Like, but I don't know. And so once I confronted him, now we're looking at how does he handle the confrontation? And if you notice, I asked that question really like in a confused way, like calmly, like, you know, maybe I'm wrong here. However, it seems to me or looks to me or sounds to me, there's, there's, there's something you're uncertain about. There's something you're uncertain about. And then let them explain. Remember, truth will people just explain. Liars will often try to convince you. I'm not doing that. What are you talking about? I told you everything. And they can get overly aggressive. So we're seeing sadness here. We're seeing a shrug. We don't know if the shrug is connected with deception or if the shrug's just like, how many times can I answer this question kind of shrug? And the 10-year-old Wade had slumber parties with Jackson, sleeping with him in the same bed. Yeah, you know, there's been different times where it'll just be me and Michael. Shrug, did you see that shrug? Parties with Jackson, sleeping with him in the same bed. Yeah, you know, there's been different times where it'll just be me and Michael. 
times where it'll just be me and Michael. Then there'll be other times where he has other friends over too. Wade had slumber parties with Jackson, sleeping with him in the same bed. Yeah, you know, there's been different times where it'll just be me and Michael. See that truck right there? Oh, there's been different times where it'll right just here. be me and Michael. Right there. Then there'll be other times where he has other friends over too. That's what, like what Brett said. It's, that's what. I want to try to stop this. This is what I would bring friends over to. Me here. Well, there's another shrug right there. But I feel like. There's a shrug. You totally see that shrug? I feel like there might be some fear in there or anger. Maybe even a little sadness. Maybe even a little sadness. Not enough. That's what, like what Brett said, it's just a slum party. You just have a lot of fun. And the 10 year old Wade had slumber parties with. All right, I'm after the low hanging fruit. So when you're looking for reading body language, try to grab those low, that low hanging fruit, which is the obvious stuff. But like this is a slam dunk. You can see it really, really easily. Or the parts of the body that are hard to control, hard to control. So I think that there's probably some maybe sadness in there, maybe some fear, maybe, um, maybe even a little disgust, but I'm gonna ignore it because it's not low hanging fruit, it's not obvious. So right here, I'm gonna focus on the couple shrugs that we see and the, the lack of affect here, you know, this robotic answer. As a matter of fact, it, his affect has this sadness about it, right? This, this affect has this sadness about him, about him. Let's move on. Show me where he touched you. <laughs> No nonsense, no shenanigans, but he's a weird guy, you have to admit. Right? You know what, at the end of the day, it's like, everybody's got something weird about him. Show me where he touched you. Are you, are you paying attention? No nonsense, no shenanigans, but he's a weird guy, you have to admit. You know what, at the end of the day, it's like, everybody's got something weird about him. Show me where he touched you. <laughs> All right, are you catching what I want you to look at? So this is Wade when he was on Jimmy Kimmel, and he's now saying he lied here because he's saying now allegedly Michael Jackson had in fact molested him for seven years from seven to 14. Um, are you catching the hot spots here? There's a couple. Number one, Wade tells us in the documentary that in the old days when before he <laughs> told us his truth uh, or his alleged truth, that if someone ever asked about Michael Jackson molesting him, he'd always make a joke. Like, I don't know why he never molested me. I guess I wasn't his type. I guess I wasn't good, good enough. And we hear him here do this joke, right? I don't know if you caught the joke, which he says to Jimmy Kimmel, he did the same stuff to me, but it grow that he did to you. So he makes this little joke. As a matter of fact, if I kept it running even longer, he gets aggressive because Jimmy Kimmel teases him again. And Wade Watts leans forward and says, uh, hey, can, can I finish answering the questions? And the audience gets like so silent, right? So we see this like me jerk reaction, this anger that, that's out of place in this, this coming forward, this attack mode. What I want you to notice here is when he's talking, is number one, of course, he deflects with this joke, same thing, dude, he did to you. I want you to notice this long eye block and a little flutter. It's just an extra second, it's an extra beat, but we'll often see this with people who are being deceptive. Um, it is not part of his normal baseline. He doesn't normally every now and then have this long blink and an eye flutter. And there's something else we'll point out in a second. See if you can find it. No nonsense, no shenanigans, but he's a weird guy, you have to admit. Right? You know, at the end of the day, it's like everybody's got something weird about him. Okay, watch this eye flutter right here, watch. See this long? It's a long eye close, just like a beat, like a, like a second. And then it's a flutter. Watch it again. This is indicative. We see this when stress is high. We see this when stress is high. This is not someone who's jovial and, and joking. Maybe the stress is high because he's sick of people asking him. I don't know. We don't know what happened there, but we certainly know this is a hot spot here. And I also want you to notice that tongue protrusion. Do you see this happening? We see this as well when the stress increases, and we'll chat about that in a second. I block it. <laughs> 
I blocking, it's like your, your screensaver with a password protection. You put your cell phone down and the screensaver comes on and you have some type of code that you need to do. Um, its goal is to stop people from seeing your sensitive information. So if eye blocking suddenly happens and you're asking someone a question, I want you to imagine this eye blocking like um, some of the people that I have posted here below. We have Chris Watts. We have, remember this guy? He's, he's a real peach. He murdered his pregnant wife too. This is Scott Peterson, murdered Lacey Peterson and unborn son Connor Peterson. Peterson. Um, Ted Bundy and, and Susan Smith are drowned her two young sons because she was dating a guy that didn't want to date a, a woman that had kids anymore. Uh, and they're all eye blockers. As a matter of fact, not only are they, not only are they eye blockers, uh, I, I talked about this in my TEDx talk that I just did. It won't go online until, what's this month? Uh, May 2019, May 2019. And it's how, how to get what you want in life by decoding the body language of murderers. Um, right here, Chris, Chris Watts uh, blinks his eye at 1.5 seconds. Um, I would say it's similar here with Wade, this 1.5 second mark, maybe less, maybe at one. We see a two second eye close here. Ted Bundy, nine second eye close. And then look at that, this is unbelievable. Susan Smith closing her eyes for 34 seconds, right out of the gate. It's like, this woman was involved, man. This woman was involved for sure. Uh, so we see eye blocking indicative. Hey, I want to stop people from seeing my sensitive information. I want to say to my baby <laughs> that your mama loves you so much. Here's Susan Smith doing this eye blocking, not seeing my sensitive information. And she's also smiling. Are you catching the stooping delight it's called? She's doing this inappropriate smiling here. She's doing that inappropriate smiling. Susan Smith's not the only one I brought I you. I want to say to my baby. That <laughs> smiling. Your mama loves you so much. Mac Daddy eye blocking over 30 seconds and this smiling, that duping delight. Unbelievable. Remember this guy? And I didn't realize that basically, I mean, in, in the eyes of the law, certainly in the eyes of God, you're responsible. And, and, so I had to wake up and, and, and realize what I had done. And with a clear mind and all my essential moral and ethical feelings intact at that moment, uh, uh, absolutely horrified that I was capable of. All right, so psychopath. It's hard to read psychopaths. I'm not a therapist. Uh, I just want to point out even though I'm not a therapist, I want to point out, he says, you know, I felt terrible. I couldn't believe I was capable of such things. And he's leaking happiness here. There's joy. You see a little smile coming up. We also see that tongue protrusion happening. And we see this long eye close and this long eye blocking. This is the night before Ted Bundy was put to death because he had the death penalty. Uh, many people believe that he did this interview because he was talking about in the interview being addicted to porn. He thinks he killed all these people because of his porn addiction. And so that... He, Many people believe, especially people in law enforcement, that this was his bid to like analyze me, analyze me, you know, give me an extension, uh, don't kill me tomorrow, because uh, he he said things. It's an unbelievable video. You can watch it on YouTube. He said things like, even I don't know. You know, I know the experts are trying to analyze me, and they haven't come up with any answers just yet. And even I don't know. Other people are like, nah, this guy just wanted some attention. I don't know. I'm of the camp. I think he was probably trying to buy time here. Try to buy time here, uh, even though. Um, a psychopath doesn't experience emotions. I think that he's trying to withhold some joy here. And so that's where we get the eye blocking and the tongue protrusion and then this leaking of happiness. I'm going to show you tip on you one more time. We're doing something like that. What happened and realize that basically, I mean, in, in the eyes of the law, certainly in the eyes of God, you're responsible. So I have to wake up in the morning and and realize what I had done. And with a clear mind and all my essential moral and ethical feelings intact at that moment, uh, uh, absolutely horrified yes, that I was capable of, uh, that I was capable, that I was capable of, uh, that I was capable of, Died. Rated horrified is the smile coming in. Do you see it? That I was capable of doing something like that.
this long eye blocking indicative of people. I don't want you to see what's really happening here. All right, right here, as he makes his denial, look at this. So that long eye block and that tongue protrusion happens with Ray, Wade Robson, with Wade Robson. Here are tongue protrusions. These are different people. Again, these are some of the murderers we've seen. Uh, not to compare uh, Wade Robson to murderers, but I'm showing you that uh, a murderer has everything to lose, right? Their reputation, their freedom, and certainly their lives along with their reputation and their freedom. And if you look, Chris Watts, tongue protrusion, we saw that many times. This is Jody Arias. She slaughtered, slaughtered her ex-boyfriend, Travis Alexander. Devastating case. I weighed in on this case. When she was on stand here, I was in the courtroom when this picture was taken, um, sitting with Travis Alexander's family. I was not sitting with the press in the back rows. Uh, I was sitting right up front. Um, you could probably notice my voice is changing a little bit because this is really tough. Another tough one for me because uh, she said that she was a battered woman. And uh, for people who are really battered women, I had a boyfriend that who was a hotshot lawyer that uh, did really bad stuff to me just this one time, but one time too many. And I have a, a, a family member that uh, had some really bad stuff, was in a better relationship. So this is a tough topic for me. Um, all of these are, they all connect with murder and Scott Peterson, Scott Peterson, man. Can you be more specific because you're accusing someone who is deceased of criminal activity. Yeah. So I need you to be a little more specific. Did he perform sexual acts on you? Did he force you to perform sexual acts on him? What was the nature of the abuse? Yes, exactly what you said. He performed sexual acts on me. Yes, yes, exactly what, yes, exactly what you said. He performed sexual acts on me and forced me to perform sexual acts on him. All right, first, I rewound several times so you can see that shoulder shrug here. So for the people who say, I think this guy's lying, I get it, man. There are tells in here that make us suspicious. He's shoulder shrugging when he said, yes, this, I'm showing this as a demo of bad questioning. Matt Lauer says multiple questions here, you know, did he perform sexual acts on you or you perform sexual? How about walk me through what happened? Walk me through the sexual activity step by step. Yeah, step. Tell me what happened. You know, one open-ended, simple question. Ask one. You know, walk me through what happened sexually. Period. Stop talking. But did you do sexual acts on him or did he do them on you? And then Wade says, yes, um, he did them on me and I did them on you. So he's parroting. We often do see this with liars. They'll reuse the words that we give them. So I can see why you could get some, some positives here for po possible deception, for possible deception. Um, for me, I still believe that he's telling the truth, despite this hotspot here. Again, we're looking for clusters. Is this a hotspot for me? It is a hotspot. Can spot. you be more specific? Eyebrow, eyebrow is a, asymmetry. I want you to look at this. Um, we see this, even as a young kid, we saw this in that clip I showed you a couple of minutes ago. Wade's eyebrow, sometimes his right eyebrow sometimes goes up higher than his left. I don't know if you can see it. I'm looping it here for you on the screen. His right eyebrow goes up more than left. This tends to be skepticism or displeasure or doubt. So when you see, I can't do it, you know, where you raise one higher than the other, I don't know. Jim Carrey could do it, the actor slash artist, painter. Uh, so eyebrow asymmetry where one goes higher tends to be skepticism, displeasure, or doubt. We don't know which one it is. Uh, maybe he's uncomfortable here. Also, do you notice what's happening here? Another tongue protrusion happening at the end of this statement. He's also squinting his eyes. These are things that we're uncomfortable seeing or challenges, right? So think about, but liars sometimes squint eyes too when they're trying to come up with the story. So it could be a hot spot, might not be a hot spot. Think about threading a needle. You thread the needle and you squint your eyes. It's intense focus, intense focus. Watch this video. Now this is from Leaving Neverland with HBO and you can see this eyebrow flash happens, not eyebrow flash, this eyebrow asymmetry, asymmetry happens right here. This right eyebrow is coming up again. This right eyebrow is coming up. Now you may be wondering, all right, Janine, if this is skepticism, displeasure, or doubt, what are they saying when this eyebrow goes up? Well, I'm so glad you asked because I brought it for you. It was, yes, an incredibly talented artist and with an incredible gift. He was many things. Okay, did you hear it? Did you see it? it was, yeah. Here's the eyebrow flash. Look, not eyebrow flash, this <laughs> right, brow, right eyebrow up, eyebrow asymmetry, asymmetry. Um, I keep saying flash, it's not eyebrow flash. Eyebrow flashes, how you doing? That's excitement. Eyebrow asymmetry, skepticism, displeasure. Ready? Watch it again, what's he saying here? Yes. 
incredibly talented artist? Yes, incredibly talented artist. So this is connected to what he's saying in this moment, skepticism, displeasure, or doubt. This could be displeasure right here, you know, because the allure, I think Wade even said in an interview with Oprah that um, the grooming, grooming is what, what predators will do is they'll give us gifts and say good things to us and um, they'll try to groom us. He, and Michael Jackson uh, allegedly groomed both Wade uh, and both, uh, both Wade and the other accuser, um, James Safechuck, and the parents, right? And the parents. And so Wade says in an interview with Oprah, um, the allure began way before they even met Michael Jackson because he's super famous. Wade himself loved Michael Jackson, had Michael Jackson posters everywhere, dressed up like Michael Jackson, danced like Michael Jackson, won this costume, um, contest, dance contest. He was too young to participate, but he participated anyway. He ends up winning because the audience goes crazy, he meets Michael Jackson, and spirit all begins. So right here, if you think about it with Wade saying, you know, this grooming happened even before meeting him, that he loves kids. We know he loves kids. He cares about kids. Maybe right here. I don't know. We would have to ask Wade. Can I, it, what I would love to do is, by the way, if you know any producers out there, I'd love to have a show or Netflix documentary on analyzing the body language and going, re-interviewing these people with these hotspots and asking questions, me asking questions. Yes, an incredibly talented artist. Yes, an incredibly talented artist. So right there, t t incredibly talented artist. We don't know what it has to do with. Now right up over here. This is, you gotta get rid of them. Oh, this is about the underwear. And then this is where um, allegedly Michael Jackson, uh, when Wade was 14, tried to penetrate him anally, allegedly. And later Michael Jackson allegedly calls him up and says, where are your underwear? And he's like, I don't know, I took him off and just got dressed and came down the studio. And he's like, no, you got to go back and get him. And allegedly Michael Jackson's car came, picked him back up, took him to the house to find his underwear. And allegedly they did have some blood on it. And uh, Michael Jackson allegedly told him to throw it away. And he went to the garage and threw them away, allegedly. And so we see this eyebrow flip. You got to get rid of them. You see right here? You see, you got to get rid of them. If there's blood. You see, you got to get rid of them. She gotta get rid of them. Could be displeasure. She gotta get rid of them. Displeasure. She gotta get rid of them. You decide for yourself. You may remember this guy, Robert Durst, another documentary on HBO called The Jinx. Unbelievable. I weighed in on this case quite a bit. Robert Durst murdered probably several people, uh, and he's in jail for a murder now, and murdered one of his best friends and was found not guilty, which is crazy because he said it was self-defense, but he dismembered him and talk, 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 chunked, cut him up to chunks. So I don't know how the jury found him not guilty. Comes from a real estate family, multi-millionaire, if not billionaire family out of um, the New York area. Uh, one of my friends, Terry Moore, lives and still lives in a building he once owned and was in the basement doing laundry and he came down this was after getting out on murder for his friend watch this uh, when there's a burp or a yawn, there's likely an increase in stress going on. There's a lot happening physiologically in our bodies. As a matter of fact, if you go out for a job interview, a lot of job interviewers in the interview will start to yawn. And they don't realize why they're yawning. It's not because you're tired, you've got good sleep, you don't understand. It could be because there's a spike in stress and anxiety. And so all that physiological changes happening in the body. We see this a lot with deceptive people too. They'll often burp or yawn. So be very careful. Remember, in order for the interviewer to look at you as confident, or if you're in sales, to have your prospect look at you or your client look at you as confident, you first have to be confident. So be careful of what you're saying to yourself. You need to show up as confident. Bring out your steeple when also all else fails. When you steeple people, you can intimidate people. All right, Robert Durst. He's being shown the word Beverly. See, there was a letter at the scene of the crime where his best friend was murdered. Her name was Berman. And when she was murdered, there was this letter at the scene of the crime from Robert Durst and spelt the word Beverly wrong in block letters. But here's the catch. A letter was sent, anonymous letter, to the Beverly Police Department in those same block letters, and guess what? The word Beverly is spelled wrong. So first, <laughs> the reporter says, hey, 
which Beverly did you write? The, the letter written to the police or the one found at Susan Berman's house? He goes, no, the one at Susan Berman's house. Then the reporters, really clever, just took the word Beverly and put it on one piece of paper and said, great, show me which Beverly did you write? Did you write this Beverly or did you write this Beverly? And this is where we have that spike in stress and anxiety. Let's watch it again. This is important, hang in there. You're doing great. What does that say to you? Either writing looks similar or the spelling is just the same as so I see the conclusion of the copy. Or the writing example that was included, they were both written by the same person. And I think this is a comparison. That touching of the ear, that's a hot spot. Which is uh, very similar. So, I guess the question is, did you write the Madonna about no and write the Canary now? So you wrote this, but you didn't write this. Definitely wrote this, but I definitely did not write that. I guess I'm searching for a way, uh, among other things, to understand how um, two people could be disposed better. I'm searching for a way to figure out how you didn't write the Madonna about no. It's so similar. Could you some pausing? Look at all this spike in stress and anxiety, right? These pacifier gestures. So Look at this one. Answer questions about my color Let me answer that one. To your knowledge, were you ever accused of having sexually molested your color? That's an instruction not to answer on that one. This is in a deposition, uh, March 1st, 1996, as you can see in the bottom left of the screen. Throughout this whole interview, Michael laughs. Now, I, I watched an earlier video with Michael Jackson. It was his first interview he had done in a long time, almost a decade, with Oprah at Neverland Ranch. And I will say, he has a shy side, so he'll often get giddy and smile. Uh, and there is a lot of smiling happening here. We're talking about possible sexual abuse and these accusations about Michael Jackson. He's laughing um, throughout it. So maybe could it be nerves? Could Michael Jackson be nervous and shy being asked about all this sexual stuff? Yes. Yes, it could be that. Could it be um, duping delight where he's holding something back? Yes. So this is a real tough one when you watch this behavior because part of Michael's baseline is in fact kind of this giddy shy thing about smiling and laughing. Um, the issue is when he denies any sexual abuse, you can tell he's reading a script. I think even you can, if you follow his eyes, you can see that it's almost reading a teleprompted script and you can see Michael's not laughing there. So here, um, this is probably more authentic as we watch this and he looks over at the camera several times laughing and he does an interesting move I'm going to point out to you here. Very similar to who? What we just saw, Robert Durst, right? So this facial blocking, it's connected with when we're anxious or nervous or worried or frustrated or maybe emotionally struggling with something. Now, if these two guys were telling the truth, they could be emotionally struggling with maybe telling you the truth, right? Or you're not believing them. And so... And it's important to know when we see this behavior, it is, it's a pretty big hotspot, especially when we're looking for clusters of other movements connecting with deception, which we saw here. Robert Durst himself goes into a bathroom shortly after this, forgets his mic is on and confesses to himself in a mirror saying, they're not buying it. They're not buying it. They're not buying what? That you killed them all, of course. You killed them all, of course. It's unbelievable in the documentary. So just similar behavior. Uh, we know Robert Durst, uh, if is in jail and uh, Michael Jackson has since passed so he can't comment on this behavior here. So just know it's suspicious behavior. It doesn't mean Michael Jackson was, was a child molester. It certainly says this is something I'd want to examine more, this yawning and this other stretching move. 
So let's explore the stretching move here. This is called cobra hooding. So this is that cobra move. You'll often see this. So Michael Jackson's doing the more traditional cobra hooding and he leans back. This is a territorial display. It makes us look larger. So this is like the cobra snake. Um, so you don't think we're in power. I mean, so you think we're in power. Um, it's as if you're telling someone, I'm in charge here. Now, this is where Michael Jackson's lawyer is shutting down a lot of the questions that are coming his way. And all of a sudden, he hoods here. And not only that, he shows vulnerability by showing his neck. He's doing this long eye close. The problem with this is this smile that's happening at the same time. It's just, this is really... Um, not what we expect. You know, powerful liars, though, especially powerful liars who have powerful lawyers, um, a powerful liar focuses on the rewards, not the consequences. And a powerful liar um, has a decrease in cortisol, that stress hormone, in the moment of lying. And a powerful liar has an increase in cognitive thinking, where if one lie doesn't work, another lie can come up really quickly. And so we have a difference in everyday liars versus powerful liars. So uh, we're not sure. It just for sure, this, this uh, body language says, huh, I'd want to ask more questions. We're not sure what's happening for Michael Jackson. We can't ask him those questions. Um, Robert Durst here, on the other hand, he does this big stretch, and then he makes this double fist. This is a pacifying move, right? He does this stretch here. He just finished yawning seconds before and does this stretch. Like, oh, why did I say what I said? I'm into trouble here. I'm in trouble here. This gripping, this gripping. That pacifying move. And so I'm 14 at this point, and I've had a major growth spurt. I'm probably 5'11", so the same or taller than Michael. Just a whole different physical vibe. And at some point in the night, you know, we slip back into the routine, the same sort of sexual stuff. And I don't remember how exactly it evolved to this, how it moved to this next stage. But what ended up happening is Michael uh, tried to and penetrate me um, in my anus with his penis. And trying for a while and I guess was able to a bit, but it was really painful and too painful for me. So, so he stopped. So, so he stopped you know, trying for a while. So trying for a while, it drops a pronoun here. So this is a hotspot for possible deception, right? Drops the pronoun. Well, and I guess was able to. Up was able to up it. Uh, I just kind of. Was able to up it. And this is a problem too, because it, there's no pronoun. He. Anything particularly different. Yeah, I don't remember us like talking about it. So, so he stopped for a while and I guess was able to a bit, but it was really painful and too painful for me. So, so he stopped. All right, his illustrators match what he's saying. It was really painful. He's nodding his head, yes, too painful for me. Just pausing, I know a lot of people saying he could be acting. He did this in a shoot for many, many days to, to make this movie. I just feel like it's congruent. Despite having hotspots, even in, when someone's telling the truth, there are going to be hotspots because a hotspot just simply means there's there's some spike in stress and anxiety. We don't know what the cause is if we don't ask the question. So you're looking at the big picture for me. I believe him. Maybe you don't believe him. That's okay. We can have a difference of opinion. I don't remember us like talking about it or or anything like that or acting like he doesn't remember so it makes sense that we struck you i don't know i don't remember had happened i think after that after it wasn't working after it was too painful for me we kind of went back to our regular 
Show the shrug. Routine. Well, he's saying that shrug belongs there, right? Because he's saying, I think, I think we went back to our own routine. And, and I just kind of, I just looked up and said, it, it, it is true. Um, All right, this is where, this is Wade's older brother. He's a younger, I think the sister's younger. Maybe he's the youngest. Well, he has a sister and this is the older brother. I know the older brother, the brother's older. And the, the brother here said, my wife had a dream last night that, child, that Michael Jackson actually molested you and you've been lying all these years. And normally Wade says that he would allegedly normally make a joke like, yeah, 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 he never molested me. I guess I wasn't good enough or cute enough. And uh, this time though, Wade says, it's true. It's true, he did do that stuff. And the brother gets angry and the wife like implodes. All right, watch this. Uh, there's something I want to show you here as we wind down. My name is Janine Driver. I'm the Celebrity Lie Detector. Uh, live every Wednesday night on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure if you enjoy this program or find it valuable, be sure to like it and follow me. If you're on YouTube, be sure to friend me on Facebook, Janine Driver forward slash BLI, Body Language Institute. So you can watch it live every uh, Wednesday night, 10 p.m. East Coast time. I just looked up and said, it, it, it is true. Um, um, I'm looking at him, um, and I'm like, is he telling me a joke or something right now? And I'm like, what do you mean? And all sorts of things are going through my head, like the amount of years that, you know, he's defended this guy. Now you may see the brother was smiling here, right? So that could be, you may be saying, well, McKinney, maybe he's lying too, so it's stooping delight. Maybe it's more apt that it's like embarrassment. Like, how did I not know this? I remember uh, Amanda. Uh, this is emotions. And I know a lot of people are saying that they think Wade is an actor. Is he that good of an actor? So his lips are like shivering here. This particular clip, this out of the whole documentary, this clip, and as I continue to analyze it, this is the one that said to me, I believe he's telling the truth. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I've been wrong one time before that I know of, and I'm sure I've been wrong many other times. I just don't know it yet. Uh, but I'm big on putting my opinions out there, and uh, I believe he's telling the truth. I could be wrong. Maybe some people are saying, well, maybe he was molested by someone else and he's channeling those emotions from Michael Jackson. Maybe. I don't think that's the case, but maybe. Watch this. This clip. This is it. If you watch one thing, this is the clip to watch over and over and over again. I remember uh, Amanda was, uh, was on was my left. And I remember physically she just said, uh, Look at this chin. She just came in like, her, like someone punched her in the chest. And my brother sort of had the opposite physical reaction, like his chest kind of popped out. Like he got angry. <laughs> There's real anger in his eyes. All right, what do I want to compare this to? I want you to talk about this. This bulging vein out of his forehead. Are you catching it here? Look at this. Unbelievable, it's like a tree going from his hairline all the way down to under his eye here. Really, so you think he's that good of an actor for the people who don't believe him, that he is able to increase at will his emotions so much so that he can increase his blood pressure so that the veins can't handle the amount of blood that's pushing through because it is extreme emotion. So he can pop his, his veins out of his head. Now I've seen a kid who has like varicose veins on his head that is able to do this at will. I saw it on YouTube one time. The average person cannot do this at will. Can some actors and actresses perhaps do it? Maybe, right? So if they get into that role where they just remember pure grief, but look at this, Wade Robson, really, do you think he's that good of an actor that he can pump his blood at a high increase? And does he know that someone like me is going to come on and look for something like this for legit? Ask sexual therapists. They'll often tell you people who, kids who are molested, um, when they hold that secret for years and years and years, are full of blame and shame and, and, and fear, uh, embarrassment. 
uh, they'll often have a, a vein pop out on the side of their head or their forehead. This is indicative of someone telling the truth. This would be really hard to control. I zoomed in on it here on the right of your screen. This is this right here was the, the Mac Daddy. You may remember these guys, the Menendez brothers. Look at this, the Menendez brothers. Uh, they killed their parents and lots of controversy on why this happened. And then after they killed the parents, they were spending all this money. It was crazy. And they said someone came in and killed them. However, uh, if you watch them in court, one of the questions was, you know, what, what led to this all happening? You know, what was, the, what was the catalyst to making this whole thing happen? And they talked about sexual abuse the father did, and then the older brother, who was sexually molested allegedly by his father, allegedly started molesting the younger brother. And so it was this like child molestation nightmare. A lot of people did not believe it. I believed it. And I'm not the only one who believed it. And what makes me believe it? There are genuine, authentic emotions here. Uh, these guys are not professional actors. They didn't have years to prepare. Uh, they're in court and the vein starts bulging out of one of the brothers' heads here. I'm gonna play this video clip for you now, the Menendez brothers. In 1993, another court TV classic, California versus Menendez. Two brothers, children of privilege from Beverly Hills, accused of blasting their wealthy parents to death with a shotgun. What do you believe was the originating cause of you and your brother ultimately winding up shooting your parents? My dad had been molesting me. He raped me. Did you ask him not to? Yes. How did you ask him not to? He raped me. Did you ask him not to? Yes. How did you ask him not to? I was told him. I don't know. Were they greedy predators or victims of abuse? For months, poor TV viewers were spellbound. It was a hung jury. The second time around, the brothers were convicted of first degree murder. All right. Uh, in 1990. Bulging vein in the forehead. Bulging veins. Look at this. Veins drain the blood out of your brain at a steady pace. However, when there is heightened stress, heightened stress or intense emotions, there is a sudden rise in blood pressure and veins get engorged in our forehead or our face. Uh, Chris Ulrich, who's a fellow body language expert and friend of mine, I remember one time he was doing this session with this one woman who you know, could tell stuff about people and she was asking him really private questions and I was there and Chris is very private and he's not answering the questions and as he's there and she's asking one question after another, his vein starts popping out of his head. And I go, uh, obviously, Chris, I know you're private. You want me to leave so you could have this very private conversation with this person. And he's like, yeah, do you mind? And I go, yeah, I figured it's whatever you're going to say. It's got to be intense, dude, because your vein is popping out of your forehead, popping out of your forehead. It was whatever he was going to share. I don't know. It was heightened stress, intense emotions. Guys, this is, this is connected to blood pressure, to our blood pressure. Our high, this is spiking our blood pressure. Very hard to fake, very hard to fake. Can some people fake it? Yeah, some people can. Not very many. Look at this. See this little bulge right here? You know who this is? Lady Gaga. So Lady D Gaga was talking about being uh, molested as a young kid, and boom, vein pops out of her head when she's giving that talk. Right here. Right here, vein pops out. It's hard to see in this picture. It's a little blurry, but this is Woody Allen's daughter. This is Woody Allen's daughter, Miss, Miss um, Farah. Okay, right here. We see another vein popping out right here. This is Alyssa Milano, who began the hashtag Me Too movement, making an alert on social media, like, hey, let's do hashtag Me Too, anyone else who's been violated so we can stay together. And what she's telling her story of abuse, alleged abuse. Um, look at these veins all popping out. These three people, do you believe them? Or do you think they're lying as well? Maybe, so I, 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 I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm like, okay, well, people are gonna go online and say, okay, Janine, you can fake it and I'll prove it to you. So I figured, okay, what's a movie that I could find where someone is talking about intense abuse, sexual abuse, where uh, maybe they're acting and I can see if their vein pops out of their head. And I went to this. 
Uh, you may remember this movie. It was called The Accused. It came out in the 80s. I think it was the late 80s, like 1988. It was based on New Bedford, Massachusetts case where um, Big Dan's Tavern gang rape happened. The guys were all found guilty, except for the people cheering them on. They were not found guilty, but all the rapists were found guilty. This really happened. I'm from Massachusetts originally. New Bedford, Massachusetts. I was 13 years old when this happened. This was all over the media. It was a big deal. Um, even though these guys are found guilty and went to jail, the victim herself um, was really harassed and bullied and everyone said, uh, get out of town. And uh, she did, she moved, she had a couple of kids. Uh, she later died in a car accident and also still in her young 20s. She was in her young 20s when she had been gang raped in a bar and uh, very similar to the, the movie The Accused with Jodie Foster. So I'm like, okay, I Googled Jodie Foster on the stand. Can I see this Oscar, multi-Oscar winning actress? Does her vein pop out of her head? Can she do it? Let's see. Oh. No, 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 no. Not, uh rape or hell or police, but, uh, oh. She won an Oscar for this. <coughs> Look at this. No. <clears throat> That's hair. Anybody hear you? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> Did you signal to anybody in the room, say a hand signal? No, my hands were pinned down, right? Signal to anybody with your eyes? Are you struggling? Yes. She does have a vein, a subtle vein pop out right here on her forehead. It, it might get mixed up with the bangs here or muscles moving. So the muscles are going up with her eyes. She won an Oscar for this movie. Just want to remind you, she won an Oscar. Let's zoom in a little bit on her face so we can watch it from this perspective. Look right here. This is the vein that's going to pop out. See this right here? Look, you can see it. You can see that vein. Let's do it again. Right in here, look. Goes right up, right here, on our nose, right to here. We see this vein bulging. So can it be faked? Yeah, it can be faked. The five women we honor tonight with nominations for Best Actress in a Leading Role have proven to be as resilient as they are talented. We salute them for their outstanding effort with these nominations. From Dangerous Liaisons, Glenn Close. From The Accused, Jodie Foster. From Working Girl, Melanie Griffin. From A Cry in the Dark, Meryl Streep. And from Gorillas in the Mist, Sigourney Weaver. And the Oscar goes to Jody Foster, the accused. Why do I show you this? Uh, I show you this because, are you saying Wade is, is acting so good, he's like an Oscar winner because she won an Oscar. Think of all those Sigourney Weaver, all those people that they just listed. Unbelievable, these Emmy Award winning actresses and they can make it happen. But you're saying Wade, this dancer guy, because he's in Hollywood, he's able to make his vein pop out of his forehead. I call BS. Jodie Foster herself, I was curious, could she, did she herself have some type of sexual um, experience where she was sexually violated or molested and she could have channeled that experience? And this is what I found on Honey Celebrity, uh, 9.com.au. Now, two-time Oscar winner Jodie Foster has shared a disturbing story about her own experience. As a 14-year-old in Hollywood, in an interview with SBS, the feed last night, she said, 
The 53-year-old woman, Jodie Foster, revealed that a male producer called her while she was at a friend's sleepover and pretended that she missed a meeting, knowing that her mother was out of town. He had me come over to the appointment and was talking to me and asked me to take off my jacket and turn around so he could see my body. He asked her to undress. You know, I was 14 and kind of chubby with pimples and whatever, but yeah, my agent went to his office and punched him in the face. I guess he had her undress. Here's Jodie Foster about that age at 14. This is what she looked like. Uh, so maybe she was channeling that. Maybe she's just such an amazing actress. She does her research. Listen, every eight minutes, Child Protective Services uh, substantiates or finds evidence for a claim of sexual child abuse. So every eight minutes, we've been here for an hour and a half with all the segments that I've done in the fourth episode of Celebrity Lie Detector Live. If you know someone that you think might be a victim of child sex abuse, or you yourself, even if you're an adult today, you can get help and talk to someone. Here's a hotline down here at the bottom right of your screen, 800-656-HOPE online.rain.org. I'm hoping this still is active. I found this online today and threw this in last minute. If not, if this is not active, please go online. There's something out there that can help you for sure. Um, my name is Janine Driver. I'm the celebrity lie detector. Thank you for being here. Tonight, we broke down in numerous episodes. We talked about the scam that happened in colleges, paying to get their kids in. We talked about J-Lo and the big scandal after she got engaged. Baseball player, this tool, is saying that A-Rod is cheating on her. And I don't believe it to be true, but there's not enough in info at this point or interviews for me to analyze Chris Watts. Broke my heart sharing the interview where he talked about how he killed his kids after a 45 minute ride with their dead mom in the back of the truck. Devastating. And then we did the journey of Wade Watts, talked about Michael Jackson for a little bit. Listen, at the end of the day, everybody, we can see hotspots. We can see suspicious behavior. It simply says to us, there's more to the story here. It's up to us if we had the availability to ask more questions, to do due diligence, to dig deeper, to remain calm, be careful of getting angry and judgmental when you think someone is lying because all you're gonna do is push them and back them into a corner. And now they're just gonna be afraid of you. You wanna remain calm when confronting people. You're looking for numerous hotspots and clusters and ask powerful questions. Keep tuning in every week Wednesday here on Facebook Live. I'll chunk them into little categories and put them on YouTube as well. Thanks for being here. Please tell all your friends, start having parties. I don't have questions this week because Facebook was down. So I'm airing this on Friday night instead of live on Wednesday night. I don't know what was going on with Facebook. Thanks for being here, everybody. My name's Janine Driver. I am the celebrity lie detector. I can't wait to see you guys all next week. My job is done here. And next week, if you're wondering who we're going to talk about, oh, yeah, and you know who this little peach is? Ah, uh, yeah. You may have heard the SEC says Elizabeth Holmes' fraud was worse than anyone. Elizabeth Holmes, is she a sociopath? Ex Theranos employees describe culture of secrecy at Elizabeth Holmes startup. She thought it, she was Steve Jobs, changed the tone and pitch of her voice. We're going to be pulling her apart. Why? Because HBO is doing a special. Thank you, HBO. You are amazing. You keep doing these awesome documentaries. It makes my life as a celebrity lie detector so much more interesting. Send any links you want me to look at. If anything happens in the media this week, please let me know. My name is Janine Driver. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, everybody. I love you. Bye. See ya. Thank you.